Now hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, it is time for another scientific experiment, I guess. <laughs> now quite a while back, I made a video about flying planes in extreme cold weather. Yeah, in that video, I took a few planes on a spin somewhere in Antarctica at minus like 100 degrees and see what that actually does to the flying part of the aircraft. And surprisingly, there was not that big of a change in, you know, performance. Yeah, extreme cold is definitely not that that big of an issue for a plane as long as there isn't any icing because you know airliners like the 737 are built to fly at minus 50 degrees in cruising altitudes obviously so that was no problem but today let's actually go for the opposite let's fly planes at extreme heat now I got the idea for this video today while actually flying yeah you know I'm, I'm learning to fly right now I did some patterns today again at around 30 degrees Celsius which is 90 degrees Fahrenheit yeah it is uh, quite hot weather out outside right now in Europe and yeah there was definitely a big change in the performance of the plane and in general how it flew especially compared to when there's only like 10 degrees of uh, Celsius temperature which is like 50 Fahrenheit it doesn't matter I guess so yeah I thought well why not fly planes at very very hot weather even way hotter than 30 degrees talking about 30 degrees let's just do that let's just do a little bit of a test takeoff and see how that works out obviously 30 degrees Celsius isn't that much. Again, that's around 90 Fahrenheit. A plane like the 737 will not struggle that much, but especially small propeller planes like the one that I'm flying obviously gets affected a lot more because obviously it has a lot less power anyway compared to a jet plane like this. Here we go. You know, I know the 737 quite well. I don't usually fly it here at 30 degrees in the sim. I can definitely feel that there's a lot less performance here. We almost use the whole runway. The plane is definitely performing a lot worse than I expected. But yeah, flying at 30 degrees Celsius is definitely safe enough. Now, let's actually go for like, uh, how about the hottest recorded ever temperature on Earth? That is gonna be 56.7 Celsius or 134.1 Fahrenheit recorded in Furnace Creek Ranch, California, which is in the Death Valley Desert, which is by the way, the hottest place in the world anyway. So this is interesting. The thing is this scale here in the flight simulator doesn't even go up to 56 degrees. That's how hot that is. So we're actually going to have to enter these digits manually. There we go. Point seven. That is totally a realistic temperature in some places on Earth, like Death Valley. What would happen if you have planes operate at Furnace Creek Ranch at uh, these hot times? As a pilot, I would definitely not try taking off out of here, but we're in the sim, so we can do it anyway. There we go. The engines are running at full power. This is doing the best as it can. Oh my goodness. This is going to be close. Come on. Come on. Oh my goodness. 120 knots. Please take off. We are reaching the end of this runway. Come on. <laughs> Jesus Christ. See, the plane is barely gaining lift. And also, you know, the acceleration is very, very slow. Oh, wow. Let's not end up in the water. We are not Sully Sullenberger. I mean, you know, this takeoff kind of did work after all. So that is no problem. Yeah, powerful jets like the 737, they are pretty resistant when it comes to, you know, temperature. Even though this did get a little closer than I wanted it to be. This is definitely not a very safe takeoff. Planes that definitely do struggle here at this temperature is something like a Cessna. I mean, you know, this plane doesn't even have air conditioning, so you'll die inside of this thing. I am very, very grateful to fly a Cirrus SR20 that has air conditioning in it, because I don't want to imagine what it is like to fly a plane without air conditioning at 30 degrees Celsius. Not going to be comfortable, is it? Alrighty. Let's see if this plane can take off. We are running at almost zero weight, just in order to have a better chance. We are definitely gaining a little less speed here, a little less acceleration, but there we go. We have uh, kind of taken off now, so that's good, which means that we only have to go hotter. We could only take off this plane because we are running at pretty much empty weight. There's not even a person sitting in here technically, speaking weight and balance wise, which allowed this plane to make a safe takeoff anyway. It's not going to be a very, well, you know, fast flight though. There we go. And also, if you would try to, you know, fly a fully loaded Cessna 172 at temperatures like this, then you will most 
probably not have a very nice flight uh, or even a flight at all. <laughs> you may ask, well, why is this now, Swiss? Why do planes have way worse performance when the outside temperature is hotter? And that is actually a pretty easy to answer question. The main problem about flying in hot weather is that the air density is obviously very, very low. That is probably something that you should have learned in physics class in like seventh grade or something. The hotter something is, the more it expands and the less its density is. Meaning that we have very thin air. And the problem about very thin air is that a plane doesn't have a lot of air to work with, basically. So for example, the engines cannot produce as much thrust as there obviously is not a lot of air to be sucked into the engines and pushed out. And that is a big problem. You know, you have a lot less performance on the engines. Also, when the plane has less air to work with, the lift of the wings will be limited because that also has less air particles to work with, if that makes sense. It is really the same thing with flying at high altitudes. You know, when you have an airport at high altitudes, you also want it to have a longer runway than a runway that is at sea level like Nice Airport. For example, airports like Denver, which is at an elevation of 5,400 feet, has pretty much the longest runways in the US at 4,800 feet, Jesus Christ. And that is again to compensate for the airport's elevation. And again, the same goes for heat. Because in both cases, the air is thinner. Now, let's go ahead and get some uh, more hot weather, maybe 100 degrees and see how that works. There we go, 100 degrees Celsius. We are now technically flying in an oven or something. It's a pretty weak oven, but you know, it's, it's an oven still. We are cooking some planes that try flying. All right, actually that worked out pretty well. Oh goodness. So yes, the lesser air density is pretty much the biggest problem about flying in very hot weather, but there's also other problems with flying in, well, high temperatures. For example, if you have a plane like, you know, the Cirrus SR20, which is made out of plastic, then that one can actually melt at very hot temperatures. I mean, like genuinely at 56 Celsius, something like the Cirrus structure could genuinely be affected. Even in big airliners at super, super hot weather, things can actually melt and will get damaged. Now, not only taking off can be a challenge at hot weather, but also landing, because something that can happen very, very much quickly is that the plane's brakes start overheating, which is something that you really do not want. You know what? For the kicks and giggles, let's actually fly to a small runway airport, which is La Mole, which is another airport in the south of France, which we have also checked out in the past. That one has a pretty short runway. Let's see if the 737 can fly there at 100 degrees Celsius. Now we have landed the 737 at this place before without any issues pretty much. Let's see, will this work this time around? All right, so here we are on final approach. As far as I remember, this runway is around 1200 meters long. Uh, this will be a fun challenge. Oh wow, we really do have a lot worse performance here. We are running at around 60% to even barely hold our speed. On approach at such a low altitude, that's quite ridiculous. So really, the plane is fairly limited. But let's go ahead and uh, try landing it anyway. Let's not go super hard on the brakes because we don't want to like, you know, pop the tires or something. There we go, that was a normal landing. And obviously the reverse dust power is also limited because that also only works with air, which we don't have a lot of. But there we go, that was actually a nice takeoff as well, even though we used a lot more runway than a 737 typically uses. Yeah, the 737 doesn't need a long runway, as you can see. All right, now we are spawned into a bigger plane, the 777. Let's uh, maybe go even hotter. How about uh, 500 degrees Celsius? Now we are actually at the airport of Denver, which has the infamous very much long runway of 4,800 meters. I mean, that is like so long. That's what she said. Let's see how the plane flies here. Full power. I love how we're barely gaining any speed. But again, we have a 5,000 meter long runway, so maybe we can be lucky this time around. Now, you might obviously ask yourself, well, what is done against this by airlines or by pilots more specifically? And uh, obviously, you cannot really do anything against hot weather, do you? Pretty much the only thing you can do is actually cancel 
cancel your flight. This is why a lot of flights get canceled in southwestern United States every summer when there is a heat wave where there can be temperatures of up to 50 Celsius. And we have reached the end of the runway and we are still not off in the air. Yeah, that didn't work out. Yeah, that heat mixed with this very high elevation of this field doesn't make for a safe takeoff, I guess. Now, aside from the safest safety measure that you can do, which is simply not flying, you can also do things like, uh, you know, reducing your aircraft's weight. You know, you can do that by simply selling less seats, which is what American Airlines like to do in a heat wave. Also, you can load in a little bit of less fuel as well. That can also help quite a bit. At places that are permanently hot, like Dubai, which is where we are right now, they have one special trick upon their sleeves. The thing is, when you fly to Dubai, you will most probably land and take off either at night or early in the morning or in the evening because, you know, during the day, the temperatures are obviously way too hot. And, you know, that can be a very easy way to prevent hot temperature. You know, just fly during the night where it's colder, which works perfectly fine. All right, I'm still waiting for this 777 to take off, though. I mean, you know, actually, the bigger the plane, the less affected it is by hot temperature. So this, uh, so this even has a better chance than the 737. There we go. I think we have... Uh, no, we have not taken off. This is going to be a very miserable crash. Yeah, and now the city. This is not good, but this was a pretty interesting experiment anyway. So, so yeah, guys, that is why planes don't fly in, you know, hot weather. It obviously makes a lot of sense. The simple answer is, you know, the hotter it gets, the less performance a plane has. So, yeah, guys, thank you for watching today's video, and I'll see you tomorrow. As always, good night.